Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So, we had to push this one back a week. Um, had some things come up personally, so we pushed it back a week. And to be fair, it was all my fault. <laughs> so, uh, I went well, to my, my daughter's kindergarten, uh, had a little like lunch fair, so I went and had lunch with her and stuff, so I think it's a it was a fantastic excuse, if you ask me. Totally legit. Family comes first always, so, yeah. So, other than taking or going to lunch with your daughter, what else have you been up to? For- well, you know, I've been working, actually, with some... So, having children that are young like mine, I have this problem in where I can't take them to the gym without putting them in child care. <laughs> They're not allowed to do anything at the gym. So, I've been trying to figure out something to do with them in the backyard. So we finally got the big ginormous trampoline, you know, that every other family in the world has. Uh, But uh, I also uh, put a climbing rope in and I'm halfway through installing a uh, pull-up bar that's sizable, like a a salmon ladder. A salmon, yeah. Okay, a salmon ladder. Yeah. Nice. uh, I don't know. Well, uh, I, I haven't put up the slack line yet this year. But uh, they, they enjoy that, too. So. And if you don't mind telling us, how old are your kids? Uh, so my daughter's five. My son is three and a half, but he looks like a five-year-old. So okay. So he's way more active than a three-and-a-half-year-old. Nice. So, yeah, we're trying to, trying to make my, uh, you know, no video games, just play outside a little bit, uh, working for me. So, yeah, how about you? Very yourself? nice. Yeah, you got the pool open, I saw. We did, uh, finally. Nice Not that we can use it because, you know, we are from Central Illinois and it yesterday felt like winter again, so but it is open, it is flowing and hopefully the sun will warm it up so we can start using it soon. But Do you have new people uh sp- staying there? <laughs> the picture I think it was the ducks, right? Yeah, so we we took the cover off the pool and it had the pump wasn't even actually running because we didn't have enough water in it still. No chemicals in it, so it still was winterized and all of a sudden these two ducks come flying in. And of course, I'm like, "Oh, look how cute." And Brian, my husband is screaming trying to get these things out of the pool. And I'm like, "No, just let's take pictures of it." So, um they they did stick around for just a few minutes and then flew over to the neighbor's yard and got in her pool. So. <laughs> just pass them down. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And then one of the guys across the street had posted that they were over in his yard. So they were they were making the rounds around the neighborhood for sure. But um, yeah, it was it was cute. That's the first time uh, we live kind of. I mean, we live in a subdivision, but it's kind of on the outskirts of town, and so we have a lot of wildlife yeah, just outside of our. Me. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got deer that are out. There's a big open field behind us, and so there's deer and all kinds of ducks and geese that are out there um, in the water that's out there. But we have not had any of them come visit the pool yet, so this year was the first. (laughs) But it was cute. I took videos, and Brian doesn't want them there. He thinks they'll use it as a bathroom, so he's trying to figure out a way to keep them out. It can't be that tasty for them. Yeah. Yeah. So I've right. been doing question and answers lately, some open discussion, and uh, we did what? Size. We didn't mm-hmm. have a gym, but uh, harping back to about this is the point where I don't want to call it everyone's completely forgot about any New Year's resolutions, but let's just say we're at the point where if you fall off the wagon, you've definitely fallen by now and probably got back on and maybe even fallen off a few times. So, uh, what, uh, so what are some of the things that you've uh, done to kind of get yourself back when you first started, thinking back? So, personality where you just went, yeah. you just like flipped a switch and went cold turkey. Yeah. But maybe you never fell off. Yeah. Well, I have not fallen off. Um, again, not that I have never had eaten things that I shouldn't have, right? Um, not not intentionally, but I know that there have been. Um, so that's more like a lean. Not like falling right, off. right, right, right. So, yeah, so like vacation, I don't stress about that kind of stuff or whatever. Um, but 
people do come to me and ask that question. And what I find to be the easiest or the most beneficial is get your mind straight. First of all, like stop, stop going back to the dietary mentality where, oh my gosh, I failed. So now I'm going to eat whatever today because I've already ruined the day. Just stop beating yourself up. Don't wait until Monday. Don't wait till the first of the month. Don't wait till tomorrow. Your next meal, just make it be what it should be. Like, have the cravings and you might still struggle a little bit, but your mind has to be the first thing that you fix. Because if we keep beating ourselves up because I fell off the wagon or I ate this Snickers or whatever that is, you're not going to get past that to be able to get back on the wagon. Yeah, the well problem. Well, I already blew today, so I'm right. just going to go ahead and go crazy. Well, it's Wednesday. Yeah. I kind of blew this week. I'll start my diet next week. Yeah. This type of, well. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, don't look at it as an extended time. Think about it as your next meal. Yeah. Look at your next meal and just do it. So, what do you think about people who say um, they want to almost punish themselves? Oh, no, I screwed up so bad at lunch, I'm just not going to eat dinner. Um, again, I think it is a mental game. Food should not be punishment. Food is fuel, period. End of discussion, right? Same like, gym. Yeah, exactly. You, First of all, yeah, it, it, and a lot of people think because I ate something bad today, now I'm going to have to kill myself in the gym. First of all, you already did it. Forget about it. Push it out of your mind. It's a done deal. You can't undo what you did. Not only that, I would I would add, because uh, those were kind of leading questions, because you know I work at a gym, and, I, and I'll see people that be like, oh, I was so bad this weekend. I, I'm going to go get on the Stairmaster for blah, blah, blah. And I, I just kind of feel for them because at the same time they're going to limit their caloric intake they're going to increase their cardio so their body is going to be depleted and that's where the mind game just can really just mess with you because they will be starving yep. at 10 o'clock yeah exactly and and again food and exercise is not punishment these are things that we need as human beings to function properly and so if we continue to use them as treats or um, special occasions or something like that, as, as long as our mind is in that space, then I think that's where you're going to go with it. But fix the mind. The next step is, and, and we've preached this before, right? You yeah. can't outrun a bad diet. Mm -hmm. So if you eat garbage, you're, you're not going to make up for it in the gym. It's, I mean, you're just not. And so, yeah, my favorite was the ketogenic athlete recently had a, uh, they were talking about this topic and they said, uh, well, you know, you do burn calories smacking your head against a brick wall. <laughs> and it was awesome. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, you can keep doing that to yourself. But, uh, but I just thought that was a funny, if nothing else, the mental, the mental picture of, of <laughs> was it Danny or Brian that said it? Oh, no, it was a guest. Oh, I don't even oh. Know who it was. <laughs> but it was a fascinating fact. But I just cr was cracking that because he built the mental, mental picture of the person that said, I'm punishing myself by doing cardio. And then just, I'm just picturing the person smacking their head on the wall. Over yeah. And again. and again, you know, it shouldn't be punishment. You, it's a done deal. So, I mean, it would be no different from your child doing something wrong and you continuously punishing them for that for an extended period of time. It's, it is no different. I go there. But you know what I mean? Like, you deal with the situation when it happens, period, which whatever it is, and then you just move past it. You don't, you don't continue to be mad at your child because they dropped something on the floor, right? You deal with it when it happens. You move past it. It's no different. Don't do it to yourself. Yeah. Like, so that would be my first. <laughs> and then... Um... Do you think that falls into, so we did an entire episode back in February on avoiding temptation around the, uh, you know, the whole holiday for mm -hmm. uh, Valentine's Day. I guess it's technically not a holiday. But uh, that would be a good one to call back to because then we can talk about how some of those temptations and how to avoid them. So just a call yeah. back, back to that. But um, what do you think about resetting, like, so let's say, for example, for me, whenever I have 
more carbs than I normally do. Mm -hmm. And uh, please bear with the background noise as we our building gets uh, <laughs> get construction done. Uh, the the next day sometimes can be a challenge for me just because I ate more carbs and then I wake up that whole problem with waking up kind of hungry. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend for something like that? Because I want to get back on the horse, but normally you know I don't eat till a little bit later. And do you recommend just doing your next meal or and yeah so i am a firm believer in eat when you're hungry um i know that you know intermittent fasting is a good tool to use um limiting the number of times you eat to you know one to two times a day that's a good tool and and i'm i prescribe to that as well but i am I am a firm believer that you need to first listen to your body. If you are hungry, you need to eat. Now, I would preface that with if, if you know that it's probably caused because you ate more carbs than you normally would have the day before, or maybe you ate super late at night and so you woke up hungry, um, I would suggest eating something that is extremely fatty, and then it's going to hold you over, and maybe then you won't need to eat your second meal until late in the day, and you can kind of get back into the cycle. Um, but I absolutely would never recommend anybody going hungry. Well, you actually totally, this is, so this is my last night. Uh, I worked late. I didn't get home till 8 o'clock, so the time I ate oh dinner, it was like, you know, way too late to be eating dinner, but I didn't want to not eat. So I didn't eat carbs per se. As a matter of fact, I actually limited my carbs because I knew I would be hungry in the morning, but just, you know, pork and I added butter on it and just, and ate, and ate some macadamia nuts and stuff. And I was still woke up this morning, just completely, and I'm always go to the gym fasted. Yeah. But I was like going to the gym and it's like the first time in a long time. I was like, man, I am hungry. Yeah. So, I mean, in that, salt water. Um, yeah, I, that's what I did. I'll just be did it help you honest. with your hunger? Well, I don't know because I, uh, added an extra variable into the mix. So I ordered some of that, uh, the, if you've heard, we've talked about the, um, different people before, but one of the bodybuilders recommended this, uh, this, this, uh, it's like a, uh, hydrator. And it's like, is it an electrolyte? It's an electrolyte. Okay. And stuff. But and I had never had it before, and it came in the mail like yesterday or the day before. So I was like, I mean, I, this is a perfect time to try this because, you know, this is like perfect. I'm about to go to the gym and do like a hit workout, and so I was shocked that it was Swedish. It was hmm. I was expecting it to be super salty, right? But it, and it was salty. Don't get me wrong, but the magnesium and stuff and everything in it just, I think, to kind of mask that and make it not. They have it had stevia in it, shows. Oh. Didn't realize because I don't hmm. pay attention. It was keto savage. So. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought it Robert does it. I just didn't. Like, stevia or sucralose? Uh, it's a stevia leaf. Oh, he uses stevia. He does. Mm -hmm. Oh well, the, well anyway. It was, I, and then I was, so fast forward to two hours later, I was getting ready for my coffee and I was like, man, I was, I was hungry before I had the coffee. Yeah. So I, I think, I think there's different avenues, right? First of all, if you know your body, um, I would, if, if I were going to analyze what you, what you did and what you should well, do. Well, too many variables. For well, me. so I, my first question would be, were you hungry last night when you ate dinner? Even though it was late, were you actually hungry? Uh, um, not really. Then I would have suggested to skip that. And then, because if you're not hungry, then eating that late you may not have gotten a good benefit from that food anyway. But some people function very well eating that late. I'm not one of them. But it goes back to knowing your own body, right? So that would have been a suggestion. Funny, I didn't even consider that. As a matter of fact, in my mind, I'm like, I've got to eat something because I've had, like, only lunch today. Yeah. And so, see, listeners, this is uh, another point that 
even though we talk about this to you guys, we still go through these mental games ourselves. So, um, but yeah, so that would be the first thing. The second thing is um, knowing your body. Again, if, if you thought that it was electrolytes and it sounds like it could have been if that um, drink helped you, uh, or I may have suggested some fatty coffee prior to going to the gym if you were feeling, you know, super hungry before you left. Uh, I have done that on occasion, not a fatty coffee, but because I know that is common. But for some reason, I just too many variables in the morning for me before I can yeah. eat at 5 a.m. So yeah, but uh, so, bone broth with some fat on the yeah, top of it. bone broth. So I have I should have done, but I had this yeah. to try. I had um, I, I have a difficult time even having a lot of liquids. If I go, uh, sometimes, I don't know, it just kind of backs up and I get heartburn if I go to the gym even with water sometimes. So I have done that with the fatty coffee, but it's only a small amount. Not, I mean, anybody who ever has seen me walking around, I carry this gigantic thing of coffee. It's probably a 32 ounce or more. I don't even know. Um, but I would never be able to drink that quantity before going to the gym. So, I mean, again, you just kind of have to know your body, but I would experiment probably with fats, um, it, not protein, um, and well, not carbs. Back in the day, I used to think about, I used to take branch chain amino acids before I'd go to the gym, even though I was fasted. Mm -hmm. But I've since realized I get enough protein throughout the day that it doesn't really matter. Right. Well, and, and that's why I'm, I mean, although, or at least for me, it never depending on you. who you talk to, if you have fat, it's still going to break a fast, um, but I, you're going to have less of an insulin response, well, which I think is what you, better. right, and okay. that's where you want to be, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's, that's where I would have. Yeah, so it took us down a weird path, so getting back to where you were heading, you said the next thing was what you were thinking about? For... Oh, well, I took us way down. Sorry. Just so stepping back, I, I took us into all about me. But so uh, the first one was just don't worry about getting back. Don't don't torture yourself. Just reset with your next meal and move on and don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah. So what what else when you've talked people through this, do you highlight? Um, Depending on how long they've been off. Right. So if you if it's a if it's a day or two, let's, just let's, pick up where you left off. Let's say it's been a month. I would recommend really from starting from the beginning because most people who um, fall off the wagon, they actually fall off hard and go completely back to eating all of the standard American. <clears throat> if that's the case you probably are going to need to reset completely and start from square one. Yeah, so we're not talking there about switching into fat <laughs> mode or not. We're talking about there's a strong possibility you'll have the carb flu again. Right, different. right. So, I mean, again, it, it depends on where you're at in your journey, um, how long you've been off. But if, you have, if you've been doing... Um, the eating for an extended period of time and you fall off a meal or two or maybe a day or two days, you possibly could get back into ketosis and back into that fat burning mode fairly quickly. Yes, I do. I do. But if you have taken a month hiatus right. and you have eaten donuts and sandwiches and whatever, um, you're probably not going to bounce back that quickly. So you, I mean, you want to go back to square one, making sure that you've got your salt intake up so that you don't go through all of those symptoms. Um, and, and you may never have gone through them, but you could a second time, right? So you just want to, you just want to be prepared for all of that stuff that is possible from the very beginning of starting out. So, so it's been five months since we've kind of gone over that ramp up. So just to kind of refresh everyone's you kind of had a stair-step approach where through a couple of weeks you took where you were and then kind of geared down the carbs. And then, So can you just give us the, the high-level bullet points of that so they don't have to... Yeah. Out? So, again, if you are falling, if you've fallen off the wagon, you probably know where um, your macro should have been. So um, I would suggest that start with the carbs and start eliminating those. And the first thing that I would eliminate is sugar your breads, and your pastas. 
Um, and then once you have eliminated those, and, I, and in my opinion, I would not even wean off of those. I would get rid of them yes. because those are going to be the most problematic to get past and get over. If memory serves the bad oils also, right? True, yes. I, of course, I would never advocate even on the standard American diet to ever eat that stuff. But if you were, then, right. yeah, I... But if you were eating it, those are something that you may be able to wean off of as well, right? I mean, I don't really advocate for it. But you're not going to have the physical need or the physical craving for those oils like you would for the sugars and the, the breads and pastas. And, and just to, I don't know why today's my callback episode, um, <laughs> the entire episode on sugar and why it's addicted yep. and went into the studies and everything else. So. Yeah. That's definitely um, an addiction piece, whereas fat is not as much. So Right. Yeah, it's bad for you and you should eliminate. But, yeah. So I would start there. And then with the rest of your carbs, start weaning off of them until you become, until you get down to your 20. Uh, and then address your protein. So, again, this is a moderate protein, high fat. So in the standard American diet, you probably were eating more protein than what you should be or what you need to. And then, you know, your fats, I don't know, depending on what you were eating, you may have had the fats high, not the, not good fats, but you may have had. So, yeah, again, I would just, you know, focus on the carbs first and then come in behind with the protein and, and fats. Dial, you, dial your stuff back in and get back on the... So any other advice? Uh, I really, I really advocate simple. So I say this a lot, but I have found so many people are struggling. Um, and now that keto is becoming a lot more mainstream, there are a lot more people struggling. And most of what I have found that people come to me is because they love this meal, and now they're trying to replicate it in keto. And not that you can't, because some things you can, but you're getting into a complex, very elaborate thing, which most of us pre-keto never cooked that way anyway. Most of us are not chefs, you know. So using a ton of ingredients, very time-consuming recipes or exotic ingredients, you didn't do it before, so doing it today, I think that's where a lot of the struggles are coming in. Keep it simple. Just eat food. I mean, you don't need breads, even though if they're keto. You don't need them. You don't need a bunch of sweets. You don't need um, all of these elaborate things. Keep it simple, and you, sh I mean, you should be able to get back in the swing of things pretty quickly. So... January, we did one, an episode called Dial in Your Macros. Yes. Since it's a callback episode. You should, call this, <laughs> you should rename this the callbacks. So this would be like a soap opera where they continually have dreams of previous episodes. There you go. Right? <laughs> so what if you are, let's, let's say I have a friend who is trying <laughs> to dial in their macros. <laughs> and uh, they did really good for a while. And, and to be completely honest i mean lunches it's very I, i've got that down to where I, it fell in my macros and everything but dude it's just killing me to track dinner it's just so hard like something about okay i have no problem saying i've got we've got asparagus in the garden right now so that's the vegetable that i'm eating currently it's it's you know so i want to have some but not a lot so it's very easy easy to, to kind of figure that out but Man, dude, I'm just so into just putting them on the pizza pizzazz and just getting the oil spritzer. And it's, it's just olive oil. I mean, not olive oil, um, avocado oil. And then I just, you know, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, man, I don't have no idea what that was, how much, you know what I mean? Like, those things are just killing me to, to worry about tracking. And then so I, if that's your scenario, I would be less worried about the oil and tracking the oil because it's fat, you're gonna right? You're going to protein. I know. I know. That's where we're going. Yeah. So, I mean, although when I say you need to track stuff, it's mostly because 
most of us underdo it. So yeah. when I say that, you, your fat, because we're so geared that fat makes you fat, that it is a natural thing for people our age to just try to not overconsume fat. So if that's where you're well, my concerned, friend, <laughs> my friend, yeah. his problem, the who's of course not me, um, <laughs> is I'm always, I mean, he's always low in the number of fat things. Like I'm always thinking I can do a fat bomb, and I and I've been adding you know a teaspoon of the oil to my lunch and stuff, and I'm still right. So for your friend, <laughs> in air quotes, um, I would be less worried about tracking that spritz of oil. Right. I mean, well, um, and you know somebody what? with your friend's physique. So, the, so let's 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 forget about my friend. Because honestly, that's not as big of a problem as it is. I guarantee I'm overeating protein because for some reason I can't. I'm sitting down with my family and stopping what I'm doing and getting out like a scale to measure out about how much protein I need. It's just, just mentally I can't. I just can't get that into my routine. So I don't know if I just need to measure out like my protein ratios. The, you know, so this is what tr pork looks like, you know, for a serving size. And this is what, you know, ground beef looks like for a serving size. Maybe I just need to do that to kind of. So let me ask you this. Are you making dinner each evening or is this a pre-prepped meal all so i not the my my, my friend <laughs> no uh so what happens at my house is is i have my mom cooks twice a week sure. I think we, if you go back to the cookbook episode <laughs> or our favorite episode since this is the callbacks if you go back to our favorite meals episode you'll you'll hear you know we do one crock pot a week you know uh you know my mom cooks twice and we do uh some type of, of fish, and then we kind of rotate that over and over again. So, for example, last night my mom cooked, and I came home and it was pork, pork shoulder, roast in the crock pot, just like we talked about, is our super easy meal. Mm -hmm. And so I shredded mine, put it on my plate, it's late. I did not want to take any more time to do anything so I shred some, toss it in the skillet, and then put like two tablespoons of butter on it, uh, just because. And I have no idea. Did not track it. Don't know what it was. Don't know how much it was. So I would say if that's an occasional. Oh no, it's turning into behavior. Turning into <laughs> daily. So, so this is the. I didn't fall completely off the wagon, but if you were going to. If what I was doing was some type of, um, you know, we say um two more times. Um, um, all right. I, we did the reset using the Keto Savages website. Right. He's got different zones or weeks or depending on, what, you know, which methodology. Basically, it's a, it's a like a light taper where you decrease the calories by so much. It's, it's just like a little bit. And I, I kind of just didn't bother doing it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because it's like, I know it would make sense if I was doing a cut, and I know that I could, but I guess my why for doing a cut is, just isn't there. Yeah, so again, it, yeah, it all goes back to what is your reason to do it. If you are only, if you are eating only to stay on the program and you're fine with the weight, you're fine with the muscle mass, you're fine with the way everything is. Well, this again, so this became about me. Yeah. I mean, my that's friend. right. It's all, all about John. Um, you know, it's all what your goals are. If you have a specific goal that you want, then you're going to dial in whatever it is based on that. Um, again, if it was, an occasional thing to not measure and not weigh and not track for a meal or a day or whatever, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't even second guess it because things start, they kind of balance themselves out in the end. 
But if it's an every meal thing that you're doing and you do have a goal, then I would say you are going to have to, to make the mental effort to, I mean, for me, I have a scale sitting right next to my stove. So every single thing that I do, I put the plate on and I measure everything out. I do it for myself and I always have. What's your tendency again? My what? The tendency of the four tendencies. I made you take that survey. Oh, I don't remember. Obliger? Well, anyway, I don't know. You, you are like, you're like a rip the bandaid off person. And that just mindset doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and my husband doesn't either, so I do it for him. Uh, now, I, I haven't always weighed his stuff, but he does have the desire now to kind of change his body composition. So we are going through um, the DSK, which is Deeper State Keto. For anybody who is interested, it's a program that uh, Robert Sykes has. For, from There's Geo's a link our last episode is we're doing callbacks. That is true. Uh, so let's relate this to the to the listener. So this is a way better example than mine, right? So my struggles, it's like boo hoo, freaking John. You no, know, you, <laughs> you, know, you don't care. But but to this, it, it's different, right? So, so the the listeners there, they're pretty much solid keto, but they had like let's say cashews. Because that cashews is a is an easy one. It's a nut. It's pretty much on the list, and it's not too bad. But or macadamia nuts, where you can just eat a thousand calories, right? Buy them at Costco like I do. Well, it's little to no problem, <laughs> right? So that person, or you know, they're on the path. They probably think they're okay. Yep. So then, how do you? realize that you need to do that reset and then pull back. So going back to your husband, walk us through what you're doing with him. Yeah. So again, he, he got on the keto bandwagon because I did, and I refused to make two different meals. It's like, this was never his passion. This was never something that he just sought out to do, right? He just came along for the ride. Well, he has lost uh, just over a hundred pounds. I, I don't remember the exact amount, but He's lost considerable amount of weight, and now he actually is kind of getting into, he feels a lot better, he looks better. People, although for a while, people have been making comments on how different he looks, but people come up to him a lot asking him what he has done. So it's kind of sparked an interest for him to make some changes. So So has he plateaued? Uh, I will not say that he has plateaued as far as the scale goes because his scale does continuously go down. Now, he does fluctuate some just like anyone else. Yeah. So, uh, but he, he, it, it has continuously gone down the trend. Listening in, you could. This, it, it, could it could absolutely. Be goal. It, well, it could be, what are the other triggers that m- might make somebody think, oh, that's me, I should think about this? So, uh, falling weight. Yeah, the scale could be not moving. Which we uh, talk about which, not weighing ourselves. Right. <laughs> but it could be. Now, Brian is not somebody who gets on the scale. I do it every day. Just like, I mean, I've been pretty open about that. I have. You like to tell everybody don't. don't yeah, I, I, well, and I don't recommend it for most people because it's too much. Uh, too much stress for them. But for me, being somebody who is overweight my whole life, it is something mental that I have to be accountable. And I don't let it stress me, which is why I'm okay with doing that. Uh, but Brian is not attached to the scale. He, he does it once a week, maybe. Uh, sometimes I'm the one who says, hey, have you weighed yourself lately? Are you moving? Or you know, um, But your scale could be not moving. Or, in like my husband's, uh, the show. No, he oh, doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I tell him we talk about him all the time. Though. Okay, that was fine. But his scale is moving, but his I'm body composition here, so. isn't, right? So that can be another thing. Just because the scale is going down isn't always a good indicator of a healthy thing. And not that he's not eating healthy, but in, the, in this way of eating, it is notorious for reducing fat content and increasing muscle mass. So if you're not seeing that body composition at the same time you're seeing the scale, you're probably out of balance somewhere, which I think is where my husband is at. So you, I'm, inter- I'm interrupting no, you. Yeah, go ahead. Today. Uh, so calling back to a previous episode, <laughs> uh, we talked about the in-body. Did you get him to, yes. you him to do it? 
No. And again, he's he's not he, he doesn't not geek care. out on science stuff like I do. Um yeah, he's nerds, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of are. Um he he doesn't really care about that. I think that I could probably persuade him fairly easily to go do one if I could find it. Now, I would spend a little bit of money to do stuff like this just because I'm so curious about it. If it was inexpensive enough, he may but go through. Free, at least like yeah, that. yeah. I I never did talk. They to said that, that. Per precision nutrition has them also. That's okay. a chain that's a lot of places like 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 a GNC or something. Hmm. I'll, I'll have to. Supplement company also. Yeah, I, I sure meant to ask the him. I talked about where you know they try to sell you stuff. But right. You have to be okay with that. Yeah, I meant to ask him after you had yours, and then I forgot. So I'll have to, I'll have to do that again. Put it on the calendar so I go every couple months or something. Yeah. Because that would be interesting. That would help maybe help me stay uh, enthusiastic about it. Yeah. So what do you think sparked him? Uh, really, I think it is coming into the summer. Again, we've got a pool, and I think that he just, Wanted the different look. Well, hundred um, pounds is a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot. That's amazing. Yeah, pretty proud of him. He's, in fact, today he was at an all-time low. He'll probably kill me, but he was at one ninety-four, uh, and starting out he was like three sixty something. I can't. So he's gonna kill you exactly. if he doesn't listen to this. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go home and tell him I was, I was uh, bragging about him. Yeah, not calling you out or anything. <laughs> I was bragging. No. Um, so I. You've interrupted enough that you probably need to circle back to, so he hit, hit this point where he decided he was going to do something different. Yep. So you picked you picked the uh, Deeper State Keto Program. Right. And uh, so what you started, you said you, you do his meal prep. Program. I do, I do. So, yeah, and again, this all started out that I found this, I wanted to do it because I had said early this year that my goal for this year is to reduce my fat con or my fat percentage. Um, I had my bo- uh, pop- bod pod, I think January maybe, and I was not happy with the body fat percentage. So my goal for the year was to lower my body fat. So I found Deeper State Keto. I am doing this and again, drug him along uh, for the ride. And once we started doing it, um, he actually enjoys the way it makes him feel. And then, you know, he comes with this whole body composition change. So the the premise of this program is to um, start, start you out at a larger um, calorie count. Are we interviewing them? You wanna, yes, we are. Maybe we should... Save that because technically, and we always do this where we go over on time. So if in, if you if you take out the program, we'll talk about the program in, in detail, maybe in their in, sure in yeah. our couple series that we're trying to uh, maybe do some uh, side interviews for, um, and just go back to the go back to the meal prep piece. So you figured out your macros, right? So so, so what I do is I do all of the meal prep with the, the macros in mind. So what, what do you do for dinner? So lunch to me in my head seems simple. You know, I can make the same thing kind of like on yep. Saturday, we've talked about meal prep before you make, you know, six or seven of those lunch things and put them in there. But for some reason, for me, dinner is more like a family occasion stuff. Where yeah. So, I, and I mean, my family dynamics are a little different, right? I don't have kids. Um, and but are you pre-measuring and pre-laying out basically your dinners? I do do don't. I, well, so I figure out what the macros of whatever the food is uh, up front. So I have a spreadsheet, and again, I'm a geek, but I have a spreadsheet that says, you know, for breakfast, and I'm going to use this because we do the lunches. So for, for lunch, he has four eggs, uh, one and a half ounces of cheese, and three ounces of ground beef, I believe. Exactly what I put on mine. So I know what those macros are. Yeah. So when I make his food, then I do, I measure out that stuff. So I make all of the ground beef or ground pork up front, and then I just measure out however many ounces he would eat or I would eat because I've already calculated all of that stuff. So it's a preset menu, and then I cook 
a, a load of it, and then I just, as we eat it, put it in to the containers based on the weight that I already figured. Because with the spreadsheet, it's, you know, here's his meal and here's what his, his total calories, his total fat, and all of that. And if you're listening to this and it sounds complicated, I can tell you that I'm like the laziest person in the world, but you walked me through this in one of our episodes, and I follow that almost exact same formula for the eggs and everything, and I make my containers, and it yep. takes me, now that I've done it once, the first time maybe it took me a little bit longer, but now I can, I can, I can whip that out easy in an hour. Right. Uh, kind of get, laying out stuff for prep. Yeah, and, and again, there is on Deeper State Keto website, they have a sample 14-day menu, and that's what he has done. He has laid out um, 14 days that he's already calculated what the macros are and calculated all of that stuff for you. So I just modified that. I mean, he had, you know, you have X amount of calories and X amount of fat for this meal on his program, and so I just started adjusting the food to so that the the calories and the fat and all of that matched pretty close and then I just made my own menu for what we eat because like some of their stuff I forget collard greens or something and we would never eat that so I just adjust based on what our food preference is and then I'll do it for a week and then you know that next Saturday I'll do it for another week but I'm always a week ahead of what we're doing so I just I just prep it mentally first and then actually make the food and then measure it out based on what those macros are so supposed to be. Measured, I get to dinner. Are you measuring it out before you put it on your plate? For absolutely. You yeah, absolutely. That's where I guess I have the mental block. Yeah. So, again, I have a scale sitting right there. Well, and it's not that hard. I mean, no. Exactly. No. Exactly. Yeah, and depending on what you're eating, if your kids are eating the same thing and your wife, um, you know, you scoop out what they would eat, whatever portions they are, and then just put your plate on and you just weigh as you're putting it on there. Yeah. If uh, you're an app developer and you're listening to this, I was telling you that I really wanted a function in a tracker where I could say, I'm eating pork for dinner. How, how many, how many, like calculate how many Pro, how much protein I have left today and tell me how much I can put on my plate. Yeah, so if anyone's listening and you guys want to hook up with us and do an app, we do have some great ideas. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even want to create an app. I want somebody to just put that in their app so I can use it tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> All right, well, we've had enough about me, and again, we ran over like we do always. So if you're trying to get back on, think back to the, the main stuff. Forget about... Forget about it. It's in the past. Yep. Restart with your next meal. Don't beat yourself up. Even if you want to burn c calories, bashing your head against the <laughs> wall. 